Like this video? Why not subscribe? Today on MH News, we're writing a script for a music video. Welcome to MH News everyone, I'm your host Matt Haslam and as always if you like this video, why not like and subscribe to our channel and go to mhnews.info using the link in the description below to our blog post, find out more information on this topic as well as all of our episodes on our website. Um, this entire episode is going to be on writing a script for a music video. Now basically if you're used to working in a space of regular scripts and films or short films or documentaries then music videos are definitely outside of your comfort zone but it's always gr great thing to work outside that comfort zone. Um, for me I started out working with music videos and it's kind of just every once in a while we'll get one and it's it's great to work with them because I love doing music videos. They're probably the most fun of any of the genres that I do. Um, definitely this music video is going to be in a jazz song so it's not necessarily in my wheelhouse of uh, music that I enjoy listening to but as a filmmaker or and as a company you have to work in different genres that you necessarily don't love and you don't listen to the car radio with this kind of song you know so you have to work in different spaces and it's great to get yourself out there in different genres that you're not used to because it's great getting outside that comfort zone and saying hey I can do it really well even though it's not something that I'm used to and being able to go outside of that comfort zone and do it really well says how good of a filmmaker or anything or how professional you are in anything that you do so definitely doing a music video in the jazz genre is really going to show how good of a filmmaker I am to kind of go outside the comfort zone and do it well. So basically the first step in doing a music video is not like your typical script. Um, where your typical script just says, here's what our first line is, we fade into this, here's where we are. doesn't say that. A music video goes to a song and basically that song is already given to you by your client. So my client just emailed me the script, the whole uh, the mp3 of the whole song and the song is 3 minutes and 33 seconds long. So what I did was I put a time code in here. This is called time code script by the way. Um, so basically it's just an excel sheet basically that has 0 minutes and 0 seconds, 0 minutes and 1 second and then I just follow that down all the way to where my song ends. So this song is 3 minutes and 33 seconds long so I have all the way down to 3 minutes and 33 seconds down here. Now what I've also done already is I went through and figured out how long that intro is. So I know 14 seconds of this, into the song, the intro stops and the actual lyrics begin. And I put in all the lyrics to the song already. So I know between 15 seconds and 18 seconds, the main singer says, the whole world's waiting on money. 19 seconds to 22 seconds, they say the second line. Third line is 23 to 25 seconds in. And then there's an instrumental between 26 and 27. and the next lyric starts then. So basically I've already went through and said here's where all those lyrics are because it's important to, it's really important to know that. Basically when you're writing a regular script you really don't have to deal with uh, something that already existed. So you're not dealing with a pre-existing uh, pre uh, lyric sheet. You basically are working with a script and dialogue that someone already wrote and you just have to fill in the video aspect of that. So it's a lot different than your normal script. So basically, because that's already pre-recorded, it's already a song, and it's already on MV3, then you have to coincide with that with your video. So basically having a time code allows you to do that. So now I'm able to go in there and say, well, here's what I want to happen over in this right-hand column. So it has the time code, the lyric, and what's happening. So over here, I'm going to write down what I want to be the initial first scene of this whole music video. And I'm able to merge my cells over here in Excel to say I want that scene to last four or five seconds long. I want that to go from here to here. And basically how this allows me to do it is later on when I get into the actual lyrics of the song rather than just the intro, I'm able to say, well I want this scene to start a little bit after this line starts, but I want it to go into this line or this line down here. So I'm able to merge my cells all the way down here and figure out, hey, this is how long I want that scene to last. So then in production, I'm able to say, 
hey guys, this is exactly what we're doing. Here's a script. At this line to this line is where I want this to happen, and here's what we need to film. So if I'm filming a scene, let's say, that doesn't have the main singer mouthing the words to the song, if I'm just filming a random shot for that scene, um, for instance, in this we might have a shot of uh, flying over Las Vegas or a shot uh, of a casino or something like that because of the nature of what my client wants. So for that casino shot, I know it has to last four seconds long. I know it has to last five seconds long or whatever it's going to be. So basically I'm able to tell whoever is looking for that footage for me or collecting that footage or even if I'm filming it, I know I have to at least record f that many seconds of that scene really well in order to move on to the next shot. So I know when I'm on production exactly how long of scenes I need. Um, that helps me considerably later on. But one of the things that I do all the time with music videos is I'll listen to the song, I think at least 15 times before I ever get to this phase um, where I'm saying what's going to happen video wise. I want to listen to it and I want to say, you know, well, what would I picture this music video going to? What story can I tell? And a great thing to do with music videos is be able to not just have the singer mouth the words. I, I don't like music videos that do that. Um, basically, the more you can get to a storyline, the better. So I'll tell a storyline throughout this. And if I have to, if basically if I'm dealing with a band or something like that for a music video, then I'll have the whole band perform, maybe. Hopefully I don't have to do that, but if it's a whole band, I probably will. And I'll have them perform the whole song, and then I'll just cut to that scene in between the storyline. So I'll actually have actors or whatever playing out a scene of a story that I want to take place during this whole video, and I'll tell that story cutting in and out of the band performing the song. So I'll do that. But if I can, I'm going to actually go to a system where basically I don't have the band at all. Um, if I can, I'm going to play out the whole story and have the main singer as the lead character in whatever story I'm writing. Um, a great one to do this and to look at for an example is a song called Ours by Taylor Swift. Um, she's my favorite artist, but that doesn't mean anything according to this. Um, it's just to get the idea of how to do that. Um, that music video didn't have her performing at all. It just had her in an office setting, you know, maybe mouthing the words, maybe not. But there was no performance in that whole song. There was no spot where she stopped and just sung the song. Um, it's a great one to look at if you want to just create that storyline. Also, look into what uh, resources you have for your video before you go out and actually write a script. Because you don't want to write a script that's totally unrealistic. A great thing I do while I'm listening to the song 15, 20 times before I'll ever get to this point is I'll just write down anything and everything I possibly can think of even if it is unrealistic. Um, for instance, for my v music video, uh, Goodbye Friend, I wrote in there something that I thought was unrealistic, which was a scene of me walking on the beach in Atlantic City. That was something that I thought was completely out of our realm of possibility. And basically, I wrote in there, I want it to be sun sunrise, which, you know, every time I go, in, go to Atlantic City, we're not there until noon or so. So it really is difficult for us to do that. And then basically that summer it came along where we were doing an expo down there and we were going there on a company trip and I figured, hey, you know, why not actually film it? Stay overnight and film it. It will only cost this much and it ended up being our, in our budget for that video. So just because you think it's unrealistic doesn't mean it actually is. So jot down all these ideas, even if you think they're completely out there, jot them down. And even if you can't afford to actually do it, a lot of times the footage is available. For instance, with this video, my client really wants shots of Las Vegas. That is completely out of the realistic world for this video because of the budget. We don't have the budget to go out there and film Vegas. We're in Pennsylvania, which is quite a far way away from Vegas. So it's definitely out of the realm of the budget for us to go out there and film it, rent a helicopter to do it, completely out there. But in the end, there's footage of that that we can use. There's stock footage that we can use that's a heck of a lot cheaper, so it becomes realistic with that in mind.
If you're looking to make your productions even bigger and better and sound even greater, and you don't have all this money to spend on the newest and best equipment, don't worry about it. Madhouse & Productions Equipment Sales Division has got you covered. We're now offering over 150 items. That's over $20,000 of our biggest and baddest gear, all for clearance pricing. We seriously need to make some room around here. All of our new equipment is on order and already on its way. So we seriously need to make some room. So please go to bit.ly forward slash equipment sales for more information on the equipment itself, including moving head spotlights, LED park hands, mixers, power amplifiers, speakers, microphones, uh, cameras, camera gear, lighting stands, all that you can ever possibly imagine needing for your productions ever. It's all on clearance all right now, right there at bit.ly forward slash equipment sales. Go check it out. All right, so now that we got the whole video done, all three minutes and 33 seconds of this video scripted out, everything's ready. The next step in the process is actually taking this script and figuring out what you need. Um, basically, we go through the whole script and we say, what props do we need? For instance, in a couple scenes here, we need a dollar bill. And you might say to yourself, well, basically you don't just take a dollar bill out of your pocket that day, wherever you're at and whatever. Um, most people have a dollar bill in their pocket to use. Um, we want a crisp dollar bill, so definitely we want to make sure that's available to us. Um, also, in one of the scenes, that dollar bill flies away. And so we want to make sure we have a prop $1 bill or $100 bill or whatever we're going to use. That way, if it is lost, we're not actually losing money. Um, the next thing we want to go through is figuring out the costumes that we need. Um, things like a suit and tie or... Um, maybe like a lawyer's uh, a costume or a teacher's costume are things that maybe that act, the actor that we're going to bring in already has. But things like a doctor's outfit or a clergy outfit, they're different things that we might have to go out there and find ourselves. So um, we definitely shop around at like Salvation Army type places or uh, little different clothes shops around that are having clearances. But sometimes even that doesn't help, and so we have to go to a prop house or a costume house. Generally, we try not to do that because it does cost a little bit of money to rent an outfit or something like that for the weekend. But um, generally, we'll find it somewhere like the Salvi, especially for like a raggedy clothes for a character in our scene of one of the one of these scenes in the video. Um, generally, you can, you can find a raggedy clothes outfit at Salvation Army for a lot less than you can rent it for. Um, so we just go around and definitely we'll try to combine things. So when we're at Salvation Army looking for another production, if we find something that works, then we're going to pick it up. And we'll generally go to the Salvation Army or somewhere uh, in probably every two weeks or something like that to find costumes for different productions that are coming up. Um, that way we save on time ourselves. Also, another thing to look for here is what equipment you need. Um, you don't want to show up to a day of production and figure out you need, you need something and it wasn't written down. So generally what we'll do is we'll write a whole list of equipment and we have a checklist of here's what we're going to need this day. And we do that same thing for all the props, we do the same thing for all the costumes. That way we say not only what do we need to get ready, what costumes we need to buy for a certain time, if this production's coming up on Friday and we haven't gotten that costume yet, certainly we need to go find that really fast. But um, other than that, basically you want to make sure when you're on location, you have everything you need. You're not having to run back to the office for it. So we'll write down a whole list of all the costumes, the props, the equipment down to the last battery or light bulb or gaff tape, down to the last minuscule thing we can possibly think of to say, here's what we're going to need on this day of production. That way we're not thinking it out on that day. The next step after this is writing down a shot list of what we need every day on production. For this, we have about four days of production to do. And um, basically, we need to figure out what we're going to need each of those days. And a lot of people like to do storyboards. I don't like to do them. It just doesn't make sense to me. Um, for a couple of these scenes, I might have to do it because I need to f tell my VFX artist what exactly I'm looking for. And it might be easier that way. But we work so closely over the years that he kind of already understands that. Uh, then basically, so for me, I don't do storyboards. I do camera angle placement boards, um, sort of like uh, figuring out. I just draw a little camera and I draw two people, stick figures of where they're going to be in the scene. And that's where I'm going to place my camera if I have a 
dolly track. I'm going to draw it out that the track is going this way or the track's going that whatever way. Um, so I'm going to draw all that out and make sure I'm all ready for my days on production. The more you plan out your days and the more you plan it initially here in pre-production, the less time you're going to have to take on production days to figure it all out. If you're going through on production day with just the script, with no shot list or anything ready that day, then first off, you're going to miss some things and you're not going to get all the shots you need. Second off, you're going to take a lot more time to go through the script and go, what do we need at this location again? Um, and then the next thing, you're also going to forget gear. So always do that. But that's pretty much the whole process of writing a script for a music video. It's pretty time consuming and we'll probably spend another half an hour getting all the shot lists together and stuff like that of what we need. But other than that, it's pretty much done. So after this, we'll give it to our crew, have it approved, and then we'll be on to production. So thanks for joining us today. If you'd like to see more episodes like this, join us every Monday for a Q&A episode and every Thursday for a how-to episode. Have a great week, guys, and see us next time. Bye. My best advice is to always work really close with the director because first off, you want more jobs later on, but secondly, you want it to look great and working in a team is the best way to do that.